Hi, I'm Julie Pham. Welcome to the Curiosity Based channel. Today we are going to talk about how you can manage your energy instead of managing your time. Now, before we get started, please take a moment to subscribe to this channel and also follow us on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook. You can find the links in the description below. So now let's go deep. After the end of my first year of business, I realized that there was some major differences between being an employee and an employer. And a lot of that had to do with how I went from managing my time to managing my energy. So I was, when I was an employee, I was really focused on how do I do all of these activities to show that I was working. And then when I became an employer, I really thought about how do I best invest my energy in work that is that I am best suited for, that, that gives me a lot of energy versus taking away energy. I also want to be clear that I'm not talking about things that you should only do things that give you energy. There are some things that actually take energy away and then give you energy later on. Uh, I feel that way about writing. A lot of my writing during it is like, oh my gosh, this feels so tiring. And at the end, I feel so good. And so it's kind of like a workout. So in any case, I have got 10 ways for you to think about how you can manage your energy instead of managing your time. So the first way is actually hiring people, outsourcing uh, people so that you can get help to, so that you can get help doing the things that you don't like to do and so that you can focus your energy on the things that you do like to do. Uh, one of the first things I did was actually to hire people to make sure that I was going to be putting my, my best energy and my best uh, my best talent to the things that I was actually good at and that I also enjoy. The second thing is to take time off and mean it. Now, sometimes when people take time off, they're actually doing, um, they're doing work and trust me, I've been there. And so actually what we do at Curiosity Base is every quarter we actually take a whole week off where the entire team takes it off at the same time so that no one is stuck back at the office trying to, uh, to do things. Uh, and work while other people are, are off. So that way it actually gives us time to rest and so that when we come back, we can be refreshed and we can do our best work. And so it actually, uh, it gives us energy. And the third is make time to care. And what I mean by that is in the meetings that we do have, make time to learn about your coworkers, to learn what's going on in their lives. The, uh, there have been studies that show that actually when people are willing to share the lows that are, that are in their life, their personal life, then they will actually be much more willing to sh be honest and candid about when they're reaching bumps in the work and they need help. The fourth is to uh, set my own terms. So this was really big in terms of being an employer versus an employee or being an entrepreneur, which is I got to, I got to make my terms, make the rules. So. Uh, one example of this is when I was writing my book and I decided to self-publish it was that I didn't have to go by publisher's rules, by other people's rules. I actually got to make my own rules and that gave me a lot of, of energy. I know that trying to follow someone else's rules and someone else's terms would be very energy draining. So I know that think about where in your life where you can actually set set your own terms and I bet that if you start looking that you'll find a lot more places where you can and you maybe just haven't yet. Uh, another one is asking for help. So a lot of times it can feel uncomfortable to ask for help. We don't want to appear needy. We, we think, oh, I can do this on my own. And yet actually asking for help can be, can give me a lot of energy back, especially when people say, yes, I can help you. Or even if they just say, hey, I can't help you um, right now, but maybe I can help you later, or let me refer you to someone who can help you. It's actually so amazing how many people are willing to offer help. Another one is saying no to some work. So this can be hard, especially as a first time entrepreneur is, I know my first year, there were many things I said yes to, yes to, yes to, um, just because I needed the work. 
And now, uh, now I'm actually being much more selective and I realized that, wow, though some of the things that I said yes to actually took way more energy and, and was quite energy draining um, and in the long run it wasn't worth it. So now I am much more selective about what I say yes to and that also means saying no to things. Uh, another one is to commute less and to connect more. I think this was a big lesson that we all learned in the pandemic is that we don't actually need to go and meet someone in person to connect with them. So I actually rather spend my time connecting with people on the phone uh, and not spending the time commuting. That was a lot of energy spent thinking about how I'm going to get somewhere. Another one is to read for fun. I actually make time to read novels, to read essays, to, to read uh, both fiction and nonfiction that have nothing to do with my work because it actually just it gives me energy and it makes me more well-rounded and better at what I do do. So read for fun. And then another one is to reevaluate your household chores. Think about the things that you like to do and the things that you don't like to do. Now, this is especially true if you live with someone. So, for example, I live with my brother. He does not like to clean. He likes to cook. I do. I realize that I do not like to put a lot of energy into cooking, and I like the monotony of cleaning. And so we divide up the work that way. Just think about those chores that you have and think about what you actually enjoy or at least that doesn't feel so much of a burden and then kind of renegotiate and divide up the chores. And the 10th tip is keeping your inbox, unread uh, emails in your inbox at zero. This is amazing. I used to feel this ping of dread every time I went into my email box because I was just like, oh, there's so many unread emails, which would give me this sense of I can just never catch up. And now I am just pretty relentless about, about deleting or archiving or reading and then flagging and so that I can go back and read it again. So I hope that these 10 tips will help you think about how you can, how you can, um, manage your energy instead of managing your time. And I bet that some of these tips are making you think about other places, other areas in like your life where you can also uh, manage your energy. So now of all of these tips, which ones do you think that you will start to apply right away in your life so that you can start managing your energy instead of your time? Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, please do hit that like button and also comment in the comment stream. And if you're new to this channel, please subscribe. Also turn on the notification bell so you will get alerts when we get new posts in. I'm Julie Pham, this is the Curiosity Based channel. I just gave you 10 tips on how you can manage your energy instead of your time. And I would love to see in the comments channel which ones you will apply right away.